The world of Arena Fighters is fascinating. Imagine a group of fans of Demon Slayer who also happen to be video game developers. They get approved to make a Demon Slayer game and are thrilled at that opportunity. But now they have to find the right balance between fan service and pushing the genre forward, making the best game they've ever done before. But they have to do that while being restrained by license holders and very tight deadlines. There's a reason why Arena Fighters are often seen as quick cash grabs. They prey on fans' love for a series, they're made to turn a quick buck with a subpar product, a half-finished game or something something recycled using leftover assets. But fortunately, out of that struggle, sometimes a game comes along that actually pushes things forward. And Demon Slayer Hinokami Chronicles was definitely one of those games. And the time has come to drop it. Without any balance patches or DLC on the horizon, the community knows that this is what the game will be forever now. And yes, Sega did reach out for community feedback a few weeks ago regarding a balance patch. But like I said at the time, there is Sega, CyberConnect2, Aniplex, and all of them have to come together for a balance patch to get approved. It was never a sure thing and I haven't gotten any updates about it, so if they're working on it, that's great, I'll be here to check it out. But I'm not super optimistic that's gonna happen, which is why maybe the time has come to drop it. It's becoming increasingly hard to find online matches, and the tournament scene is about to receive a massive downgrade too, as a lot of the top players are retiring. At this point they were simply waiting for the competitive season to end, which is why I threw that big event last week to see them in action one last time. Heliaster, Charismatic Evil, Fize, Night Demon, Aruf, Arta, Arnavut. All of these players and more said they were retiring after that event was done. And as these players retire from Demon Slayer competitive, I think it's time I retire from Demon Slayer content. I've done so much for it so far and a lot of you have discovered this channel because of Demon Slayer. And for that I am truly thankful and I'll definitely be here if there's a sequel or if there's more DLC. But if it stays as it is, then this is it. I'm not set to drop it though. I think there comes a time when you just stop playing something no matter how much you love it or hate it. And I know I'm leaving Demon Slayer knowing that it has made Arena Fighters better than before. It had so much of what I've been praising and asking for years now. Every character has a completely unique moveset. In Arena Fighters you often get a template character, something like all characters can do this combo if you mash this button. It makes things a bit more beginner friendly, so casual fans of the show can just pick it up and have fun with it. And then from that template they give characters some special moves that are actually unique, so if you really look into it, yes, they are different characters, but they also sort of feel the same. I've heard Maximilian Dude say this once, and I never forgot it, it really stuck with me. Basically, there's a line. On this side of the line you have fighting games where every character plays exactly the same. I'm talking Street Fighter 1, Ryu and Ken, they have exactly the same moves. And over on this side of the line you have unique movesets. This is where most modern fighting games live right now. Street Fighter 6, Mortal Kombat 11, Tekken 7, you name it. This side is where learning a new character sometimes can feel like starting to learn the game from scratch. And then you have every thing in between the two. Smash lives somewhere on this side of the line, where each character's moves are in fact unique and that makes them feel different, but if you hit up B you're expecting some sort of upwards special move. Dragon Ball Fighters has a bunch of characters that can do what we call the Saiyan combo. Even if they have different special moves and if you want to go for optimal routes they are completely different, it's a game that's easy to pick up because a lot of characters share the same properties on the same buttons. This line doesn't say whether a game is better or worse by the way, it's just a design principle. There are advantages to being on this side of the line and advantages to being on this side of the line. If you make movesets similar, it makes it easier to learn the game after players learn just a single character. It's easier to jump from one to the next. On the other hand, by having more unique movesets, you can allow players to better express themselves and maybe give your game a little bit more longevity because every fight feels very unique, whether it is in ranked matches or tournaments. Arena fighters have lived over on this side for a really long time. I'm talking Tenkaichi 3, Jump Force, One Punch Man. I would put all of those to the left of Smash, which is a personal opinion and some people will disagree, but that's how similar every character feels in those games, at least to me. And I've been wanting to see Arena Fighters slide over to this side of the line for a really long time, and I would actually put Demon Slayer right in this spot, very close to Dragon Ball Fighters. Seeing that kind of uniqueness is something that made me really happy. My Hero One's Justice would go uh, around here by the way, and it had a pretty big roster, the game was impressive. On top of that, Demon Slayer released with competitive balance in mind. You could play any character and actually do well with them, and I still think you can do that nowadays. It's been a very long time since we got a balance patch, so the meta has become a bit stale, but we still see some players picking Slayers to counter the strongest characters in the game, Akaza and Susamaru. There are definitely characters in this roster that are stronger than others, but no one feels completely useless. And speaking of a balance patch, we actually got one. Only one balance patch? granted, which is not a lot, but it was a really good balance patch. Every change they made was a positive change, they made the game better than it 
was. It may not be as much as we wanted because the game did deserve a bit more support for how good it is. But if you look at other arena fighters, we didn't get too bad of a deal. Once Justice got a ton of balanced patches, but it was fixing one thing and breaking two others with every patch. Kill a Kill just got worse and worse, and Storm, well, they never did anything, did they? And maybe we shouldn't be satisfied with only one balance patch, but this is what I mean about taking steps forward. They're doing stuff better than they did previously, even if that's slower than you would expect or would want them to, that's still progress and that has to be acknowledged. And they did all of this while keeping the game flashy and loyal to the source material, which is often a very hard balance to achieve. Since this is pretty much a fighting game, you want to be able to pick Murata and be able to fight against Akaza. You don't want to have a useless character in your roster, but how do you do that when Murata is a joke character in the show and Akaza is this absolute powerhouse? And yet, they found a way. And I do hope they take a lot of these improvements and carry it over for whatever their next game is. For Demon Slayer 2 or, hey, Naruto Storm 5. But let's not pretend like the game is perfect, though. It is a farewell and I'm highlighting a lot of the positives, but I do hope to see some significant changes for Demon Slayer 2, if it ever happens. This one sold super well, though, so I, I definitely expect a sequel. Thing number one, you know what I'm gonna say. Netcode. This is a constant issue with CyberConnect 2 games, and it's one we've seen in Japanese developers for a really long time. Here's the thing, the internet in Japan is very good. Look at this picture from Justin Wong. This is the hotel internet. When everyone has this, or better, it's very easy to make netcode. Especially in a country as small as Japan, everything just works. But when you put that game out in Europe and America, it just doesn't hold up. It took Japanese fighting game developers years to acknowledge this issue, and we're finally living in a world where every fighting game is coming out with good netcode. Or at least I think. Hey, hey, yo, Tekken, you're gonna let me down here? Arena fighters need to follow this, and I think CyberConnect 2 is perfect for leading the charge. Now, I haven't seen rollback netcode in an arena fighter yet. I don't know how hard or how easy it is to implement, or if it would even work at all. The closest I've seen was Rocket League, which has rollback, and if the cars were fighting instead of playing football, I guess that could count as an arena fighter. But even if we don't go to rollback territory, One's Justice had great netcode. And it wasn't rollback, so I at the very least, it's been proven that good netcode is possible in Arena Fighters. And CC2 has been making Arena Fighters for longer than most developers out there. This is the one area where they're lagging behind everyone else. I'd also like to see a small change in the battle structure. Instead of first to three rounds, make the competitive standard to the ranked matches first to two rounds. Even in the current game, I think that would immediately nerf the demon problem because they wouldn't have as much time to build so much meter and just heal forever. Games can take a really long time in Demon Slayer, especially since demons were introduced, and two rounds may feel like it goes too fast if you're a beginner, but over time as you learn to manage your health and play a bit more defensively, three rounds tends to drag quite a while. I'm very curious to see what other systems they expand on. I don't even know where they would go with it, but I did have an idea a while back of letting players choose to play solo or in a party of two, regardless of whether they pick slayers or demons. Imagine Tanjiro, except without an assist and with two extra special moves, or Gyutaro without his demon skills but with an assist instead. I think that would immediately immediately increase the roster variety, even without adding new characters to the game. Obviously, all the movesets would need to be remade and rebalanced, and that's a lot of work, but it is something that would definitely justify a sequel. And finally, I think push block sucks, but it's also this game's necessary evil. Without push block, you'd be able to grab people for free after calling an assist. I mean, it's already hard to get out of this, but without push block, it's even harder. Or instead of going for a grab, it could easily have guaranteed guard break setups. Still, I think if they adjust the damage done to guards from raw dash for instance, and they rework the frame data on block, giving characters some more defensive abilities like invincible moves coming out of frame 1, like actual true DPs, then I think you could get rid of push block. As for when would Demon Slayer 2 come out, the new season starts in April? Since nothing has been announced yet, I don't think we're gonna get a game that soon, so the earliest I can see us getting a new game is 2024. Even then, I think they would time it with a movie release or season 4 of Demon Slayer, and who knows how long it will be until we get there. But it's been a great run. When the game came out, I set the goal to just bring the best players in Europe into this channel, to play in the biggest Demon Slayer competition the world has ever seen, and that was wanted. And I think we were successful in doing that. To find the best players though, we would need to create a competitive server, and Ichunka took point on that server and really crushed it. We created a community that's so cool that will probably stick together and play some other video games after everyone leaves Demon Slayer. And how could I forget story mode? Story mode was so awesome that I just wanted a reason to play it again, so I decided to speedrun it. And that that's what got me into speedrunning anime games. All the speedruns I've done on the channel so far, it all started with Demon Slayer. Out of all the content ideas we've had for the channel, every single one of them was a banger, except for character breakdowns. I made this video teaching folks how to play Tanjiro. It tanked really hard, which was weird. Coming from 
fighters where those breakdown videos do really well. I was not expecting this one to do so poorly, but I guess it's just a different audience. Some players want to learn the game, sure, but I think most of them just wanted to see gameplay and that was fine. We just needed to pivot. But I want to close this by saying thank you for watching all of our Demon Slayer stuff. I know a lot of you joined this channel because of Demon Slayer and I hope you stick around for whatever comes next. And that will probably be my Hero Ultra Rumble, though the release date is a bit shrouded in mystery. I did get in touch with Bandai and I got some details to share. They're all in this video right here. Thanks for watching. Bye.